everybody, and welcome to qualifying for the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship 13th round of the season, coming to you live from Rome. It's a double header, and this is the first one then of the qualifying, and this is going to be a very crucial session. Group A followed then by Group B. Then we go into the dual format with the quarterfinals, then the semi finals, and the final as well. So much tension in the air. The Gladiators have been battling throughout the weekend so far. It may be warm in Rome. Air temperature 30 degrees, track temperature 42 degrees. But let me tell you, here in the commentary box, it's absolutely freezing. I wish I'd worn a, a longer shirt, but it has been incredibly difficult. But we're underway with the first session in around about 30 seconds time alongside me the coverage folks will be megan birch to talk you through this uh, opening qualifying of the weekend we're live across youtube on jb motorsports 2 uh, in upload form and repeat on jb motorsports as well premiering in case you missed it and then we'll also live uh, on twitch throughout the weekend good morning to omi who's watching on as well good morning to everybody looking ahead to this weekend group a then we'll see jake dennis pascal verline jean eric Verne, maximilian gunther sam bird uh, Stoffel van Dorn, Sasha Fenestras, Andre Lotto, Dan Tinktum, Sergio Sete Camera, Nico Muller taking part. The green light is on and we are underway then for Group A. Let's see who's going to be the top dollar bill. Pole position here is crucial. Rome is a difficult circuit to get overtaking as well. It's a 3.380 kilometer circuit. The start line is on uh, the finish line offset by 2.8 kilometers as well. In reality, uh, it's only two corners, turns one, two, three. Then you get to the start line. Jay Dennis, first at the moment in the championship positions. Can he take anything? That's going to be a question we need to ask ourselves. And looking ahead to this weekend, there's a lot of tension in the air. Dan Tictum heading out there. So also in the previous session, lots of cars going off down at the heavy braking zone. So like down at turn seven where they're approaching now, uh, we've seen drivers having numerous issues. Now we've raced here since 2018, four times this race has been held, double headers each of the time. Fast of a pole position here. Uh, last time on in race two, John Verne for Dechita, 138.268. That's the benchmark time. The car's much faster than what they were in generation two. So we should see something better. And hello to uh, SHT, who's in the Twitch chat saying, hey, Josh, hello. Uh, who do you have getting through in this group? The top four from this group to go in, I would say would be Dennis, Verline, Verne and Bird. They're the four I'm picking to go through. Uh, just on championship predictions, but with just so many of the championship protagonists inside that battle, it's really hard to tell. We are going to get a mixed up grid. That's almost confirmed. So it's even more perfect as the fans are starting to come in. It's 10.41 over in Rome. It's 9.41 over here in the UK. So they're just getting everything ready. And I apologize, by the way, if uh, we miss anything across the socials. We are developing a chat where we can have things from Twitch and YouTube, so they all come into one uh, group chat that we can have on the screen uh, during the sessions as well, and we can take a look at it. So we are developing some technology. We're getting it all sorted, so don't worry. You're not going to miss too much uh, across the next couple of races as we're waiting for Megan to enter the comms box, although she was just getting out of the shower, so... Predictably, she won't be here just yet. Verline's on a lap time then in the Tag Heuer Porsche. First sector time is across the Delta now, and it's a 25.158 for Pascal Verline. As he swings out of turn six over the horrible bump that disrupts everything on the acceleration and the spike of energies that we have. And that's why we've seen so many people with overpower issues because they hit the bumps and the energy spikes. Fenestrada 25.062 has set the fastest first sector time. Uh, second sector time is a 32.946. Verline, however, second sector 32.733. So already we're getting the fast times through turns 12 and 13 for Sasha Fenestras. And that's a part of the track that nobody likes. It really is. Uh, quite hard to get it sort of spot on in this part of the circuit. 
Track temperature 43 degrees, air temperature 29, 66% humidity, 35% chance of rain, but we're in the middle of a heat wave. Hottest uh, temperatures ever could be reached here in Rome at 48 degrees in Rome. That's absolutely insanity. The hottest ever race we've had in Formula E was 37 degrees. That was back in Santiago in season four. And I think that we could have that changed again. Maybe it was season five, it was one of the two, but still, that's almost double it. So it, it really is getting quite strong. First lap times on the board then in the benchmark as for Group A. Verline, Tinkton, Fenestras, Sete Camera, the current top four, but we've got cars coming through. Muller goes top in the apt, that's a surprise. Lotter as fast as in the second sector. Dennis, his teammate, also following it through right behind, staying the faster between them. So the two Avalanche Andretti's are pushing hard. They need to push hard to keep up with the times. But the fastest first sector, Pascal Verline. 24.791, yellow at turn seven. Who's gone off? Well, it's gone green now, so it was an error. I believe, well, let's keep a look, but there was a yellow flag briefly. It could have been Sese uh, Camera, it could have been uh, the number one of Stoffer Van Dorn or the 51 of Nico Muller. Lotter at top, 139.931. Dennis, top, 139.618, three tenths faster. Bird, second, Bird is the word. He's done a 139.850. So a remarkably quick time from Sam Bird to come through. As they continue with the attack, jean eric Verne, fastest first and second sector. So he's Muller, 24.791 first sector. Muller improving. No one's finding the wrong gaps at the moment. Verlein, I think, has pulled into the pit lane. He has. He was fast in sector one, but he was slow in sector two, so he decided to take it away. So only Stoffel van Dorn hasn't taken a lap time in the opening session here. He has come across the line now to do a 148.433, but he's doing banker lap times. So we've still lost a, a bit of pace there in the opener. Let's hear from Dennis. The remainder of the session. Just you're aware, Pascal went push, push, and aborted the second push. Bit of front wing damage there on the looks of the DS Penske. That's uh, jean eric Verne, so he's clearly clouted the wall at some point, hasn't he? Yeah, he's done something with the right-hand side. The front wing is sitting at a funny angle, and also the end plate is off it. Uh, Stoffel van Dorn there as he comes up through the faster section of the circuit. This is where he'll feel it, but also with the bumps round here. We know they're quite sensitive. And oh, van Dorn's got a broken wing! The ground as well. Yeah, as Alan Minish is saying, I've just walked back in from getting a tissue from the... The coverage box to uh, get my nose game, but Van Dorn's got a broken wing. Exactly. Wow. Radio. How bad is it? Well, I don't know. Well, the thing about wings in Formula E is it's not entirely relevant because the aerodynamics of the car are practically non existent, but it's the fact that he hit the wall somewhere. So, is the suspension damage? Well, this is just going bad to worse for the DS Penske driver. Hadn't set a lap time in qualifying, and he's crashed on his first flying lap. 148.433, he's 8.8 .8 seconds behind Dennis's top time. He's not doing too bad. I wonder, I'd be very interested to see if they complete this lap time. Second six is a 33.8. For comparison, his teammate Verne's uh, second sector was a 32.9. So I think Van Dorn is off the pace by around about nine tenths of a second with that front wing. Cross it, yeah, he's boxed. It would have been faster, but he's coming to the pit lane with 4.30 on the clock. Oliver Turvey's not looking too happy. Let's see how he did it. Now, is it down at turn seven? It is down at turn seven. He's going to lock up on entry on the rear tyre, and he hits the Tech Pro barrier sort of side on. But it's the right-hand side at the front that has uh, been damaged. He hasn't hit the suspension, but it just caught the wing. A slight winglet at the end, it just caught it in the Tech Pro barriers and sort of deformed around the car. And it just takes it off with a little bit of damage. Verline's out of the track now. He's sixth fastest, eight tenths off. So let's have a quick look at what the standings are right now. We've got Dennis on top, two tenths clear of Bird. That's a better time. Fenestras and Lotterer 
taking it through as well. And we get Muller outside, just in the drop zone. What's the gap between them? Uh, it's 0.163 between Lotter and Muller. And we have Verlein, Vern, Tickton, Gunther, set a camera, and Van Dorn in 11th place. Sitting there overseeing the strategy of how they're going to run this in very, very important dual section for uh, for qualifying for Pascal Verlein. He needs to get through into the duels from the groups. Absolutely. Otherwise, it's going to be a really tough afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. He is definitely one of the big names that we're expecting to try and uh, make it through. But down in sixth place at the moment is not where he wants to be. Here is Maxi Gunter in the Maserati. As I said earlier on, the Maserati not looking too bad. If he can get himself into the duels, that'll be a very welcome result for him. Nico Muller, meanwhile, just exiting at pit lane, ready to wind himself up for one final run here in this session. As we yeah, it's a long out lap here. They need to get it right. Tom Brooks on the commentary at Formula E's World Feed. Ben Edwards at uh, the uh, Festival of Speed, which has been cancelled today, but it will be on tomorrow. So let's hope Ben hasn't lost out on a paycheck. But Verline starts a lap time, just gets out ahead as the car's coming out of the pit lane. That is coming with quite a lot, actually. He's stuck between, you can see him on, the, on your driver tracker, he's right there, car six, so he's in between with the 51, the seven, the three, the 23, so he's really out of it for Pascal Verlein. Let's see, have a look, 24, yeah, he's got out ahead, there we go, so Verlein on the 94, coming down towards turn seven, he's managed to get out ahead of everybody, so this should be a, a good opening time. Everyone's out on the track, so this is it. All 11 cars in this first part of Group A qualifying, First sector time for Verline. No, he's down 28.5. So way off the pace. And now we've got a traffic jam going on. Just like we see every single time Formula E goes qualifying, traffic jams are the norm. They all want to go out, get the same part of the track, but they just end up impeding everybody. We saw yesterday as well, Mitch Evans getting annoyed with Roberto Meri. And Mary was blocking everybody, to be fair, as well. He was uh, being sworn out three times. Three times Mitch Evans gave Roberto Mary the finger, literally just out the cockpit, three times. Two to the right, one to the left when he was passing him. Three times. Then he had a go at him in Park Ferme at the end of practice one when they went for the weigh-in as well. And Roberto Mary was smiling. And Mitch Evans looked like he had kid at Christmas. He's had all his presents taken away. It was fantastically hilarious. There's Michael Andretti, not in Toronto for IndyCar. He's come over here for Avalanche Andretti. That's because Dennis has a chance of uh, taking the title lead, of course and retaining it going into London. Four races left, two double headers in the championship. Verline started his full power lap time now, up to 350 kilowatts per hour. But of course, they can't recharge. You've got to keep as much energy in the car as possible so that the car is fast if you progress through to the duels. And then, of course, as Verline could, the semi-final. Amy says, I was blind and didn't notice the Porsche Super Cup had a double header at Zandvoort. Yeah, that's to replace the round at, what do you call it? can't remember, um, Imola. Verline into the braking zone. Here in the rear of the car, bottoming out on the turn seven running. On board with Jean-Eric Verne as well in a picture in picture. He's through turn seven too. On the braking zone, we've got a yellow flag at turn four. And I believe it's Sergio Sete Camera. Track clear now, but it was Sergio Sete Camera who had a lock up and that's impeded Jake Dennis. That could impede Dennis, the checkered flag is out. So, set a camera off the track at turn four. Dennis was right behind. Now, has that lost him some time? That could cost him the jewels. He's top at the moment. Verlein was the fastest. First sector and second sector goes to Sasha Fenestras at the end of this first group stage of qualifying. 24-7 followed by a 32-4 coming into it as well. There we get as well, track clear in centre four, check of flags out, here comes Pascal Verlein then, out of the last two corners, into the Mickey Mouse section of 16, 17 and 18, past the Roman Emperor corners as well, into Pope right, and then down across the line, and the checker flag meets him. Verline, does he get through to the duels? He goes fastest, 139.447. That progresses him through to the quarterfinals then at the moment. Verne is seventh, can he get through? It's a crucial qualifying for him. Maxi Gunther, in the, and Sasha Fenestras. Times are changing all the time. Dennis is fourth. Dennis might actually lose out on this. That's a crucial factor. Sasha Fenestras though was green, and then purple. 
He's half a second clear of Gunther. Tickton goes eighth. Bird sets it. Cameron Van Dorn could kick out Dennis. Muller, Vern, Tickton. Then will take the flag. And to that Lotterer. Van Dorn across the line. Van Dorn's fourth. Van Dorn's kicked out Dennis. Bird goes second. Dennis is in real trouble now across the line. Does he go through? Yes. Dennis goes third. And almost had the championship leader kicked out of qualifying. He gets through. And Verline crucially doesn't. So Dennis pushes out. Pushes out Pascal Verline, the man second in the championship, will have to start this race at best for ninth on the grid. Dennis goes through, that's an improvement. So it's Sasha Fenestras from Sam Bird, Jake Dennis, and Max Gunther, the top four. They will progress to the next session. Out at the moment, we've got Pascal Verline, Stoffel Van Dorn, Nico Muller, Jean Eric Verne, Dan Tick, Sergio Lotto, Sergio Sector 2, Purple Sector 3. Good job. Let's go. Yeah. Well, I think Sasha Fenestras is just about okay with what he's done there. Megan's in the box now, has been for a few moments. Uh, interesting edge of the session. That track improvement was quick, wasn't it? And this is Sete Camera. Seen Look, it. This is Sete Camera. So, oh, Van Dorn hasn't changed his wing. Oh, Van Dorn good. hasn't changed his wing. He's just cut. They have, they've left it. And that was Sete Camera locking up. There's Dennis. So it didn't impede him that much. Just a small little lock up on the front left. Who's going to take? Oh, he actually lost the rear, didn't he? He was looking at the end of the barrier. Mm -hmm. but I, right. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. So yeah, Van Dorn, is enough, did that time, and he didn't change the wing. That's a surprise. Where's the driver? Where's the time? There we go. So I was just thinking, where did my uh, tracker go? End of the first session then. And it's Sasha Fenestras, Sam Bird, Jake Dennis and Maximilian Gunther, the four going through. Pascal Verlein, Stoffel van Dorn, Nico Muller, Jean-Éric Verne, Dan Tinktum, Andre Lotto and Sergio Sete Camera fail to progress any further. Group B is up next, another 12 minutes, then we'll go into the quarterfinals, followed then by the semi-finals and the final for the shootout. Let's head back down to the pit lane with Ramsey. Well then, our focus now moves on to... Group B, let's go down though to Radzi and catch up and see what's happening down in the paddock. Well, drama right in the last few seconds there, which is obviously why we love this format of qualifying. And initially, Kelvin, what a performance from Sasha Fenestras, half a second up. Yeah, incredible by Sasha. I think he's one of the drivers we know. He always goes full out. We've seen a couple of laps from him in Monaco, in Cape Town. These are the kind of tracks where guys like that really thrive. Hanging it loose, especially in Sector 2, where you can make the lap time, and obviously paid off. I think he's a big candidate for pole today. Big candidate for pole. In terms of the headlines, Dennis is through to the jewels, but Pascal Verlan is out. With that in mind, let's head over to Saunders, who's Pascal Merdler again now. So, yes, I'm here with Florian Modlinger from Tag Heuer Porsche Formula E team. Now, as far as things go, that's not the ideal start to qualifying and what will that mean for the race? Yeah, you have to see it was very close at the moment P5, but for me it's not a P5 at the moment because when you see a lot of drivers improved under yellow flag in sector one and there was clearly yellow and I expect that uh, race control and the stewards are on it and uh, observing at the moment what happened in the second run. So you think that could change yet? That we might see a big change in who we get into the jewels? Uh, yeah, you could clearly see that it was a yellow flag out. Cars were passing and improving sector one. This means they did not slow down despite the yellow flag. A car was facing in the other direction, which is a dangerous situation. Normally, every guy needs to slow down. They did not. And uh, let's see what's happening now. Could be very dramatic. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Obviously not happy there in terms of the yellow flag, but in terms of the result of that, Ollie, Pascal Verland's very much up against it. We said a, a strong call is necessary. He hasn't got it. No, and he could potentially be starting uh, around 10th position. That's not where you want to be in Formula E. That's the last points paying position. and Everybody outside the top 10 is trying to get into that points paying position. So very risky for him. I have to say, this is why we love this format. It's so dramatic right the way up to just a few seconds. It's amazing. I was standing right next to Oli. We were saying, our hearts are pumping. We're not even in the car. I can you imagine what the drivers are feeling right now? Um, but yeah, obviously for Jake Dennis, I think he dodged a bullet there. Um, very close to getting knocked out. I think he can be happy with that. And now we look to, to the second group, which I think will again be very competitive. Well, exactly. In terms of the top four, we know Dennis is through. Pascal is out in terms of the duels. How will the other top four face in the form of Mitch Evans and Nick Cassidy? Let's find out and get Group B underway. And will more drama unfold here in Rome? Thanks, Radzi. Green light is on then. Part two of this qualifying group stage is underway. Cassidy, hang on a minute. Van Dorn, Bird and Dennis are under investigation for failing to slow under yellow flag. So that's uh, what we just heard. 
is now going to be the case that they are under investigation. Group B, though, Nick Cassidy, Mitch Evans, Antonio Felix da Costa, Sebastian Boemi, Jake Hughes, Rene Rast, Luca De Glassi, Norman Nato, Eduardo Mortano, Robin Fiennes, and Roberto Medi will be out there on the track as their 11 cars. But from Group A, that's Van Dorn, Bird, and Dennis under investigation. So I'm just going to highlight them on my times right now with uh, Van Dorn. Who else was it? Bird and Dennis. Now, yeah. Bird and Dennis... Didn't they were all, like, quite near the top? Yeah, Bird was second, Dennis was third, Van Dorn in sixth. So that could... If, that, if Bird and Dennis had their lap times deleted... Could put Verline in. That would put Verline and Van Dorn... Actually, that would put Verline in and Muller in. Yeah. Yeah, so that yeah, could that yeah. that would disrupt the championship massively. There's only one point between Dennis and Cassidy. Verline sort of fallen back a little bit, but Cassidy now has a real opportunity to take over the lead of the championship and go straight forward if we can top the group stages. That's also the fact that you've got to remember. You get a one point for topping the group stages, and then you get three points for pole position in the final. Basically, I don't know if you've ever done one of these before, Megan. I can't really remember if you have or not. Yes, I've taken one. On my own oh, of course, London last year. Yeah. Yeah. And as you probably will in a few oh, weeks' time. I found a new way to stop sneezing. Well, at least delay sneezing. Because Ow. I was downstairs last night getting a drink. I didn't want to wake anyone up. Yeah, so, that's normal. So I didn't I didn't have time to reach tissue, so I was like Just breathe in. I just held my breath. For as long as I could until I got back to my room where I had touches. Okay, that could work. I'll try that out. But then you sneeze when you let go of your breath. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's basically just delay tactics. Yeah, just delay okay. tactics until you can get a tissue. Okay, works out. Uh, by the way, if you notice that the monitor's back to normal now, you can actually read the diamond screens finally. Uh, but when we then fast the first sector, but now it's Norman Nato in the other Nissan. So Sasha Fenestra has topped the first session. Nissan looking really strong here. Nato is a 24.837. But when we second sector, Cassidy now second sector as well. Uh, Degrassi 58.7 as we've got him open in the mini screen as we lose TV pictures coming in two turns 12 and 13. I think it, well, he's got through there clearly because now in fact, that, that's massively delayed because Degrassi's down at uh, the attack mode here at the circuit. He's down at turn 15 uh, at that hip and where Boemi is. So a little bit behind. Here is Sebastian Boemi as he will come into the last two corners and have the full on attack. Buemi then will be the first one to set a lap time in Group B, and it will be a 1.39.459. And then Roberto Medi will be up there, as well as Lucas Degrassi. And Cassidy, the next to cross the line. Degrassi second. Roberto Medi second. Nick Cassidy second. Tenth off, Megan. That's, that's a surprise there from Cassidy. Yeah. Buemi's got the fastest time. And look at that, Nato goes third. Look at Jake Hughes though in the Neon McLaren fastest first and second sector as well 24-7 followed by 32-4 so then he's looking very quick here comes Antonio Felix to Costa he goes up into fourth place six tenths off the pace of Boemi here is Jake Hughes fastest first and second sector his teammate Rennie Rast is green sectors one and two so personal Ooh. bests look at Hughes He's sliding out the last corner, also losing the rear tyre. Hughes goes second fastest, he lost a lot of time there. He's 35,000 seconds off of Buemi. Here comes Rene Rast, he goes third fastest. So it's Envision, McLaren, McLaren, Envision. Well, what can Mitch Evans do in the Jaguar TCS? Oh, he's a tenth up, tenth and a half up, actually, across the line to 139.3. Exactly, Mortara in the Maserati can only manage in fifth place. Right, so... Dennis, no further action for slowing under yellow flags. So Dennis has got away with it. So Dennis so is safe. Can't get in. What's Degrassi done? Oh, he's locked up the front tyre and taking his game. Turn seven is just becoming an. Everyone's just missing that beside of that barrier every single time. It's like they. Look! Yeah, just, just missing. Just miss. <laughs> I thought he might touch it, actually. Van Dorn didn't, though. Van Dorn hit it in part one of qualifying just when he got to the box. Yeah. Locked up. Cancellation of lap five for Van Dorn and Bird. Lap five has been cancelled for Van Dorn and Bird. Now, does that change the running order from the previous qualifying session? Just for Bird. 
that was their fastest lap times, wasn't it, from the previous? Yeah. They, I, I, I've got the timings up here in the comms box still saved. Yeah, I reckon that's gonna, so that's Bird second, lost out. Van Dorn loses his time too. So that's gonna be Fenestraz, followed then by Dennis, Gunther, and Verline goes through. Verline goes through to the duels and he'll have to face Dennis. Uh -oh. The two championship rivals together. Hughes into the pit lane. Well, I suppose that's good to make. That makes for good telly. I am tired still. Uh, you're waking up fine, don't worry about it. But yeah, I am slightly worried by the fact that this could change things. This is Lucas Degrassi then. He's down the order at the moment. This is down at turn four. Oh, double lock up. Triple, all four locked up. Completely managed to get that stop, but how? And yet he didn't go off. Look at that, all the tyres lock up. Front and rear braking system for regeneration of energy on these Formula E cars. I suppose it's good that all four locked up, because then he didn't go off. Yeah, sort of just came to a natural stop team before yeah. the corner. It's like braking. Yeah. I know, these Hancock tyres are extremely resilient. James Barkley looks a bit angry. He's gone storm. Where's he gone? He's gone. Sulk in the corner. Yeah, that's because, well, Evans is top, but Bird might be out of Super Bowl here. Cancellation of lap five for cars one, Van Dorn, and ten, Bird. That's the information that's come through on our monitors up here in the commentary box from Race Control. You can see it as well as Degrassi, uh, who's 11th fast at the moment, in car 11 as well, heads out on the track. Let's go down there to the pit, see if we Cancellation of car uh, of laps for Van Dorn and for Sam Bird, which eliminates Bird from the duels, promotes Pascal Verline into the duels now as well. So that is a very possible saving grace there for yep. the Porsche driver. He'll think he'll so that has been confirmed then. So that puts now, I'm just trying to work it out up here in the comms box. So that's disqualified uh, Bird. So, d uh, ooh. DSQ disqualified. There's Bird walking back. He's not exactly happy. Uh, who else? Van Dorn's been disqualified, so DSQ. So that puts it now as Verline into the order as well. I still can't get over how much Bird and Sebastian Vettel look alike. They just look so alike. So that puts it as two, three, four. So it does put Verline through. It puts Muller fifth, six, seven, eight, nine. So what that does is it puts Fenestrad still topping the session, but Dennis is second, Gunther third, Verline fourth, Muller fifth, Vern sixth, Tinkton seventh, Lotto at eighth, Seto Cameron ninth. Then we get Bird. Then we get Bird ahead of Van Dorn, but they'll line up in qualifying order. So it'll be Van Dorn ahead of Bird. So Bird starts twenty second and last on the grid. Already. That's what I've just worked out up here Not in the a box. Good race, David. And to add insult to injury as well, he looks like he's been sacked from the team as well uh, of Jaguar. There's rumors going around that Nick Cassidy is taking his seat going here. Look, there's the yellow flag. Now it's a single yellow. Bird goes through, as does Van Dorn before he gets back on. I was wondering why Dennis was under investigation because we saw he got cleared. Dennis was, was uh, Cassidy, uh, blah, 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 trying to go again. Such a camera was way ahead. Beforehand. Oh, Sam, I feel sorry for you. Don't Bird worry. looks like three F1 drivers into one. Yeah, well, he was a Formula 1 driver, Sam, but... Yeah, but he looks like Sebastian Vettel, Valtteri yeah. Bottas, yeah. and it's Kevin Magnussen. I right, mean, look. Oh, apologies for that, eh? Yeah. He's not happy with that, is he? They can't protest that either. Sam's out. Stewards again being inconsistent in their qualifying runs. Meantime, into the last 90 seconds of Group B before a 10 minute break, uh, or around about seven minutes actually, before the quarterfinals begin. And we'll get our official running orders from round 13 here in Rome. Degrassi's first second time is going. He looks slow there though. He's down by half a second. So Degrassi really not liking this. He's three seconds off of Evans' time. That is like Evans is going to be the first one today. One Jaguar out, one the other, uh, Sam Bird. The other Jaguar still doing well. Well, we know who's not getting fired. 
Yeah, definitely. It looks like Cassidy's going to join Evans as well. Cassidy moving from Envision to Jaguar TCS Racing. That's the rumour going around at the moment in the silly season. Don't know where Sam Bird's going to head up. There's, Fred, there's uh, Frederick Bertrand as well, the Mahindra team principal. Always looks like a slightly older, and I hope you won't mind saying this, larger version of Pascal as well. Pascal, what was it? Pedro Pascal. Uh, he's going through. I'm glad you know what I was going with that one. Oh, big accident. That's huge. Red flag. Session stopped with 22 seconds to go. You had a huge accident. And that's on the way into the breaking zone for turn seven. That's was that Cassidy having to avoid? Yeah, that was Cassidy having to avoid it. Red flag to stop the session. And that is a huge accident. How has he done that? He's taken off both wheels on a straight. So how has he done Has he hit the wall just coming over the bump at the top of the hill? I don't know. Medic cars were on the way. I don't think they really need medic cars. He seems fine. Yeah, same, yeah, medical car, you were looking at the, at, the, at the timing. Look, there you go, medical cars heading out of the circuit. Red flag then, Hughes looks to be okay. And I have no idea how he's done that. Oh, hang on a minute. Degrassi stopped. Degrassi stopped first sector. Hughes stopped second. This is where the cutoff is. So is Degrassi stopped somewhere? Did they hit each other and somehow Hughes just went skidding? And Degrassi's going to go, okay, let's have a look at Hughes. Oh, he's lost it. Oh, and he's going to slam oh, into the wall. Yeah. And he's going to... Oh, oh, that's a nasty one. So what's happened is over the bump, coming out of turn six, the rear of the car stepped out. He's overcorrected it. The car's hit the wall on the right, and he's locked up. And because he's now damaged the left-hand steering, the car was going to go the way he was pointing, so it's gone to the right, and it's hit the corner of where the marshal stands, so like the access road. It's hit the corner of it, and it's just bounced back onto the track. That is a huge accident for JQ's, Hughes, and a bit dangerous actually that it's hit that side of the part of the track that everyone's always worried about. Teammate? Yeah, that's uh, Rast coming through next behind him. He just avoided that. I hope nothing's coming to the cockpit there uh, for Hughes because it was a sideways impact. They do test for it as well. He's nodding, so it looks to be okay. But it's saying, are you all right? Yes. I'm moving. Well, we haven't had a red flag so far this weekend in uh, Formula E. Practice one and practice two went by un uninterrupted. This is the first one then. 18 seconds left on the clock. Usually they allow the drivers to have one more qualifying run. That's been the precedent in the past. Right now, Cassidy is angry. Yeah. So medical cars I down like to 7 view. Yeah, I wish Formula One had this one, the on board yeah. of Halo. Yeah. It's a nice view because you get to see them up close and not just through their helmets. I must say, don't worry, you won't hear the commentary later on in the race. It's just while we're on YouTube because it's got a it's a weird thing. Once we get to Eurosport, we'll hear the pure audio later on today. Uh, if we're on Eurosport, we're on Channel 4. I'm not actually sure where the Romy Prix is hearing this weekend. I believe it's on YouTube. Question. So, yes, go on. What else do I have to do today? You've got the e Prix at 1.45 until 3 and then you've got IndyCar qualifying at some time, I can't remember. In <laughs> and then, yeah, there's... Oh, hello! Sam's got his stuff back on. Well, why? Where are you going? That is, yeah, that's Sam Bird with his helmet back on. Now, that's... Does he know? Yeah, I presume uh, we'll have to see exactly what's happening there. There was certainly clearly some frantic texting. They may could have appealed the situation. Uh, but we'll see what know? actually happens. I think Alan McNish is right. They've appealed that decision for the yellow flag. So Why? That means you have to fix your notes again. I know. I need Tipex to be in the comms box as well. So I, have to, summon I have to sort of go, no, didn't, 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 reinstated, reinstated. So that means Van Dorn might be reinstated. So Verline might not be in the duels after all. Well, this is what the complication of this format is. is the fact that you just don't know what could happen. The amount of notes I've got up here in the commentary box. I hope they fail the appeal. The so you don't have to redo your notes. Ah, I'll just get it right. Hello. Have we, you're right. So the session will restart and the drivers will be allowed to do one flying lap. The grass is restarted. Hello. What's happened here? Because that's... But when are we getting out of the car? But they're wrong. They should stay in the car. They can go again. The, the, don't get out of the car. Hughes is under investigation for causing the red flag. Well, that means he'll lose his fastest lap time. So Hughes is going to get out of the jewels anyway. He's under investigation. I don't think he meant to. I know. It's a stupid rule that Formula 1 want to, want to introduce, and I don't really like it. The what? So, I'm sorry. You lost control of a car because of an issue that wasn't your fault. It's a penalty. Exactly. It's like, oh, thank you. That's like getting told that 
you can't take this item back because you've worn it once to try it on and it didn't fit you. Let's have another look at it. So this is out of one. Into seven. Now watch, she's going to hit that bump on the exit, on the entrance curve look. So she's going to hit the bump now. Where the car gets unsettled. There, right at the exit. Oh, the sleeping policeman. We've seen Van Dorn do that. Uh, oh, it's that side. It's the fact where he hit as well, I don't like. Mm. That in the side pod of the entrance, I don't like where he made contact. I really don't. It's terrifying. Marshall's doing well to get out of the way. Hughes has got no power, no no steering control because the suspension's bust. And he's going into the side of an entrance. Uh, it's, it's an inwards. It's, it's, it's where the marshals are to get back in. Red poor body there as well. But oh, I don't like that one bit. It, it's too The session will not restart. The session will not restart. That's unusual because we usually get the drivers having a run. So it's Evans, Boemi, Rast, Mord, and Hughes has had his lap time cancelled for causing that red flag. We thought he might do. That is not nice. So it's Evans, Boemi, Rast, Mortara, Cassidy, Nato, De Costa, Degrassi, Frines, Mary, and Hughes. The order. So session will not restart. Evans, Boemi, Rast, Mortara go through. And best lap time cancelled for Hughes for causing that red flag as we knew. What's going to happen though by the time we get to the quarterfinals? We don't know. Seven minutes is the duration, but we might have a little bit of a delay to that due to the track needing a clear up. We don't know if Sam Bird's going to go in. He's got ready to go. We've got no clue exactly the information of what's going to happen next. Do you reckon Bird will go in or is he just sort of, uh, no, no, that's it, out of it. Good night. Good night. Actually. Yeah, good night as well. Does look like it. Are we? Go is Brundle Park on this afternoon for a pre-season match at three? Oh, that could be. Uh, how are we going to record that? Okay. Let's head down to the pits with Ramsey. Well, let's go down then to Radzi and get the reaction in the paddock. Well, it's drama left, right and centre here, especially in terms of the top four. So Nick Cassidy, I mean, let's take a look behind us here. The team in Vision Garage, Nick Cassidy, absolutely devastated, currently in second place in the championship. He's out of the jaws. As for Mitch Evans, brilliant performance once again. This is perfectly setting up a potential Mitch double-double. It really is, and I, there you see it again. I think the guys that don't have anything to lose, you have to put yourself in Mitch's perspective now. He can only really go for a win, so he's naturally driving under less pressure, especially in these qualifying situations. That makes a big difference for Nick Cassidy, for Jake Dennis. They just want to sneak through. They just want to do the bare minimum to get through, and that's often when you get knocked out. And with one point separating first and second in the championship, the margins are unbelievably tight. But like you say, Mitch driving loose, driving well, and Rome, just it just glues for him. It glues for me. You can see it in free practice every time he goes out. He's able to nail the first lap. Um, he looks calm. He just drove past. You know, you can see his attitude in the car is very relaxed. And that's what you need to go fast around you. I think when you're driving tense on the limit, you're making mistakes, as we saw, unfortunately, for JQs. Also, in terms of lack of fortune, Sam Bird. There was drama within that race itself from the previous groups. And talking about that, let's head over to Saunders now. Who's got more for us? Yes, so I'm down here at the Jaguar TCS Racing Garage, and things are getting a little bit interesting because, as you might have seen, Sam Bird provisionally has had his lap time deleted from the qualifying group, which means he wouldn't have made the jewels. Crucially important because that means Pascal Wehrlein does, huge for the championship. But if you just turn the camera this way, you'll see Sam Bird is back in his car. So Jaguar have appealed that decision from the FIA, and Sam Bird's hoping it's going to go his way, and he gets a chance to go out in the jewels, therefore pushing Pascal Wehrlein out of the jewels, which it goes without saying, has absolutely huge championship ramifications. So we'll, we'll stay tuned to this story because it could be get very, very eventful very soon. Thank you for that context, Saunders. Perfectly put. And once again, just the misfortune happening for Sam Bird from the start of the season right the way through to now. Yeah, it is a bit of a snowball effect for him, you know, especially such a decisive point in the season for him. Everyone talking about contracts, he's got naturally a lot of pressure on his back. And just, you know, sometimes things just don't work out. Uh, we saw a lot of sequences there and uh, yeah, sometimes it just doesn't go your way. It does indeed, but who will it go their way as we get ready for the jewels? Thank you very much, guys. So, according to our timing screens, it's Gunther versus Dennis up first. But Megan, with the, the situation... Don't trust that to us yet. Yeah. Omi says the Romy Pri is on Channel 4. Okay, on the TV. So that's where we'll be later. But yeah, we, we don't want to trust that just yet because we've got no idea. Red flag is out at the moment. We'll go over to our 
our battle screen from where we'll be for the session. Uh, and no idea what's happened to what's happened to our driver tracker there. It's all sort of shifted on. What? I've never seen that before. It's the same everywhere. So, okay, that's just it. that's just odd. We'll leave it because we can't adjust it. So this is now the the battle screen. So this is now going to be above with the fastest sector times, the two drivers at the top for the jewels, as well as the driver track and all the information. Track temperature now, Megan, at 48 degrees here. Temperature at 30. Do you know it's used to be the hottest ever in Rome this weekend? On record, 48 degrees tomorrow. 48. And it's getting hotter right now as well. Hot, hottest ever Formula E race we've had. It's stealing Britain's heat. I'm just going to turn that down because Alan's doing my head in. Um... Hottest ever race we've had on record in Formula E is... This is hotter than any of the ancient Rome's ever had it. 39, by the way, for you know, Santiago a couple of years ago. And today it's going to be 48, something or other. Just insanity. So, Gunther versus Dennis is first up then in the Jules. There is Hughes' car. And that's a lot of... Do you reckon he'll race? That's a lot of body work damage. They've got... How long to the race? Does he have another car? No. So the no. race starts at two. They've got, and they've got to be on the grid by one thirty. They've got three hours and eleven minutes to, to repair that car. Possible, but that's a lot of suspension. Now. And it's broken the tub. That's a whole other thing to have to contend with. So Hugh's in trouble there. I don't reckon he'll race. No, I don't. Luckily, they've got a double head up, so we can have points here tomorrow as well. Okay, it's been confirmed. Gunther Dennis, Verline Fenestras, Rast Boemi, Mortar Evans is the quarter final. They will then, the winners of those will go on to the semi finals and then the final. So Bird has apparently lost his appeal. We'll get conf confirmation of that shortly. Good. But it is going to be Gunther versus Dennis first up. Out on the circuit. I think, Megan, as well, the, the, the sensible right decision to go forward. Very. Because otherwise, it's just going to get confusing. So there we see Maserati watching on. James Rossiter, former Formula E driver and racing driver. He's down there in the garage, just keeping through. So, a confirmation that Hughes was the cause of the red flag as we knew. He's lost his lap time. Pretty much standard. As we see, uh, uh, Sean, by the way, he is SHT here on Twitch, uh, just saying as well, uh, Casti is out. That's a big hit for Casti. Yep, Casti in fifth place, second in the championship, not going through to the duels. That's insane. One point away from Dennis, he doesn't progress. That's a surprise. Look at that, track temperature 48 degrees. You see the fantastic uh, Pisa there as well. In the, in the background, there's a fantastic artwork looking on the screen. 61% humidity at the moment. Look at the, look at that. Track temperature, 48 degrees. It's oscillating. Actually oscillating. Have you ever seen Rome this hot? No, Noemi might have. Yeah, I have to text her and say, is it really this hot? Is it always this hot? I mean, she's been all around Italy because she is Italian. Though she once said to me how she grew up in like high 30s, yeah. like 40s degree now. weather in That's the summers. It's why she gets so annoyed at England winters. <laughs> she feels it's unnatural. There's Gunther and Dennis watching on as well. By the way, the checker flag has come out, so the previous session is now concluded. We're in the holding period for the next session here for the Rome E-Pre, round 13 of the season. Round 14 coming up uh, tomorrow, then 15 and 16, a double header in London uh, during the busiest weekend of the year in, in uh, a couple of weeks' time, end of July. Uh, I know, I know, I know. Busiest weekend. That's going to be a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. Also, do you know it's only 10.22 in the morning? It feels later, doesn't it, for us in the comments? Very late. I know, because on the timing screen it says 11.22. But it really is... Can I want lunch? I know, I'm hungry. I want lunch as well. What are you having for lunch today? I know I'm cooking dinner. I'm, I'm doing a shepherd's pie. <laughs> you know how you know, sure. I actually don't know what I'm having. I had a... Last night, though, I had a... We're, we're filling for time, by the way. Last night, I had that, you know, that chicken pie. Yeah, I want to try that soon, except... Just without the pastry, because you know I don't like pastry. Chicken pie and gravy with that pastry, it tasted like you were eating one of David's dessert pastries. Really? 
It was so nice. And it wasn't creamy either. The, the, it was a proper gravy and chicken. Oh, look, it was delicious. One of the best pies I have ever eaten from a supermarket. I'll have to try that. I've also got to try it is like great thing. The great thing with the green paste. What happened to the cookies? cookies? There were supposed to be cookies. I just, I just remember, there's no cookies. They're being made to death. Ah, good. I could do with the cookie. We all need cookies. That, that's what we'll have. I'll, I'll have a packet of prawn cocktail. I'll have a sandwich and then I'll come back to the commentary box and uh, suffer uh, the rest of it. So there's the Drivers' Championship. Look at that. Jake Dennis leads on 154 points. Castian, 153. Verline, 138. Everton, 122. They're sort of the four drivers who are mathematically still in the hunt for the championship. Vern's just in it, but he would have to win every race. We've got 100 points left on the board. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah, he's not going to happen. He's too far out of it. So a longer delay than normal. Let's go down to the pits. Hughes car that's just come back in off the trailer and it is in pieces. This is some severe chassis damage and I think it's going to take a lot of work. Might not even be possible to get this car turned around um, for the race. This is a lot of work. There's a lot of damage to this car as it comes back into the garage. I mean, we'll stay tuned to this one, but my gut instinct would be I'm not sure Jake Hughes is going to be taking part in this race. Amazing how he can say so much and yet give it so little. It's a talent. Yeah. I mean, I was slightly surprised there because we're all sort of waiting around going like, OK, what's happened? What's he done? But all we got was there's a lot of chassis damage. They might not get turned around and I'd be very surprised. So can we know something else that and we didn't already know? We'd already said that, yeah. Is that, and it was repeated as well. It's like, what on the car is damaged? Has it gone through? Has it broken the tub? Is the what what can still be salvaged? Is the the, the big thing, of course, is is they're the, just filling. Yeah, is the tub damaged? That's what we need to know. If the tub is damaged, then he's not going to take part in the race because you can't change it. After further investigation, the stewards reinstate lap five for cars one and ten. They've won it. They have won it, which means that Verline will not take part in the in the jewels. So two of the championship protagonists have lost out. That's Cassidy cool. and Gunther. Yeah. So Dennis was so Dennis will go through, but Bird and Van Dorn have won their appeals. So Van Dorn goes back up into the order for sixth. And Bird goes to second. So look, it's changed. Here it is. Look, this is our official results from the first session. So it's now Fenestras Bird. Dennis, Gunther, Verline, Van Dorn, Muller, Vern, Tictum, Lotterer, and Sete Camera. But they were faster under a yellow flag. I don't. I, I don't get why they've reinstated those lap times. Money. Alan. In my visual, there he went through a yellow flag scenario. Is that actually his? sector time in that area because it's not just three sectors they've got mini sectors as well was slower so he did right. actually slow down for that mini sector and he gained it back in the rest of the area well that ah so they he slowed down so okay so bird goes through so now the top four fenestras bird dennis and gunther so I've got, again, I'm going to have to change my notes, but that's all correct now. So it's Dennis versus Bird. It's Dennis versus Bird then in the first of the, of the group. So now it completely changes the order because it's Dennis versus Bird in quarterfinal one. Quarterfinal two, Gunther versus Fenestras. Quarterfinal three, Rast versus Buemi. Quarterfinal four, Mortar versus Evans. But now surely Verline's going to protest saying, well, hang on a minute, he was in a yellow flag zone. You've lost... Oh, I should be in the jewels. It's a whole thing. Session will restart at 11.29. That's in... Two minutes. Two minutes' time. Well, 90 seconds, yeah. But Bird's won it. That's the first thing. Bird has won all season long. Big appeal. Well done, Sam. Silverstone last weekend in the commentary box for five live with Harry Benjamin. Now he's got it. Okay. I was. I knew I shouldn't have written down the quarterfinals yet. I didn't because it's Dennis versus Bird. So Dennis and Bird coming in. Let's go back down into the pit lane. Reinstate Bird and also 
to then mean that Verlein drops down. Well, Verlein's sitting in the car here, not jumping out of it. So do you no, think I would, I would tell him to stay in the car because if I'm questioning that decision and situation, then I cannot take the driver out of the car. You make sure the driver's in the car ready to go until the final moment when it's too late, which it kind of looks like in about 10 seconds when Bird drives out the pit lane, it is. Well, unless we get a uh, no, last minute change, it's not going to happen now, is it? As Jake Dennis and Sam Bird. So, head to head, number one. And they've had one before, but the predictors say 88% of the fans have said that Dennis will win. Only 12% have said that Sam Bird will win this uh, duel. Can't say I'm surprised, I didn't really know he was there. Yeah. That was a late, that's a late predictor call. Let's put that in. Late change to get that in. How many people had just gone on it and it's like, oh. Yeah, we'll do it again quickly. Look at those Bose headphones. They look great, don't they? Mm. I, will, I, uh, well, I had a thought earlier on, what would I change our headsets to? And I thought, well, Sennheiser do the new ones, but do you know what I'd change it to? Lip mic and, heads and headphones. Normal headphones and a lip mic. I'm sorry, I wouldn't even keep the headset. Just give me a lip mic. I want that Dad mic. Be happy. Oh, sorry? Dad would be happy. Why would Dad be happy? Because then he doesn't have to hold anything. Oh, yeah, he can have the headset. But I'd rather have a lip mic. Yeah, what would you have? have? Would you mind a lip mic if you had the opportunity? I don't know anymore, to be honest. Because you held a lip mic in Canada? Because I'm so tired and sometimes it's so loud in my ears. Literally, sometimes I feel like... You sit Sam back in the car saying, it, I'm sorry. I feel like the volume is too loud and it's not and, uh, the individual people's voices, it's just how much, it's not easy for how high the volume well, is. I like to, I'd just like to tell you something. I'm actually working on a plan here. Do you want to know what my little plan is? You know that other bus mixer? I'm planning on trying to attach it to this so that I can put your headset audio on a separate volume up and down. So... Yeah. I have really good hearing anyway, and it really messes with me. Yeah, so, so then it's like I hear double. Yeah, so then you can adjust your own headset uh, volume, and I can have mine. Yeah, no, then I can have mine as loud as I want. You can have yours. Yeah. I don't really like. I think I'll, I'll work on that for later. Is it all right today? Yeah. Yeah, we'll leave it then. So uh, first of the finals. This is what I like about it, though. It's basically one-shot qualifying, isn't it? This is what we like. It's this is what we need instead of sprint. Yeah, exactly. A one-shot quality. Because <laughs> then it also brings up the, like, determination. I do only this. And the risk of, of either fast or reward or whatever. Yeah. So they've got to go quicker. We've got to do well. This is only supposed to be a one-hour, 40-minute show, by the way. We're on there for just about 55 minutes. And we've only just got to the super chills. Yeah. Dennis starts his lap time then. 2.8, sorry, 2.8 seconds in the first mini sector. Bird's going to be next. Who's going to be faster as we cross the line at the first split? Bird is faster uh, by 25 thousandths of a second. Now, Dennis's first sector is a 24.741. What are we going to see from Sam Bird? Is he quicker than Jake Dennis? Is Dennis going to fall on the hurdle? and really surprise everybody by not being there. Bird's faster by three and a half tenths of a second. Wow, that's a lot. Sam's faster than Dennis. And this could be crucial for the World Championship if Dennis goes out in the first part of the fuck of the jewels. He might. Dennis is catching. Now, second sector for Dennis is coming up. What is it across the delta? It is a, timing's not telling us, there. It's a 32.5, what, 519 to be precise. Bird's coming into that part of the track now. Is he quicker or not? Oh, he is. 32.547, but the gap is increasing. It's now three tenths. Bird Bird's has over Dennis. Bird's in. in. Now. What's happened to Dennis? Where's that pace gone? Well, to be fair, Bird did beat him in the first mm. session, yeah. So shouldn't be too much of a surprise in the head to heads. What's happened to Bird? He's slowing down a bit. Now it gets it going. Right, lap time's in then. This is going to be quite a shock. The championship leader by just one point to Cassidy. Won't even get a point. I might stand alongside him on the grid. It's a 139 point. It's a 139.266. 
Bird is coming across the line. Watches the time from the Jaguar TCS Racing. He didn't even know he was going to be in this session. And he's chopped. 138, 816, four and a half tenths of a second faster than Jake Dennis. He didn't even know he was going to be in this session. He's just blitzed Dennis, the championship leader. He's won a second thing. Yeah. And he'll go through to the to the semi-finals. Is it just me or is this box like really cold? It is freezing. And usually we're complaining about the heat. Yeah, it's like very, very, very cold. Yeah, it is very cold in here today. Let's have a look at Bird. P1 flying over the top of the hill. Nicely done. And it's 80 degrees. Is it really? Yes. Just a bit windy. Yeah, he kept that in perfectly. Oh, what have you noticed? Possible light rain. Oh, great. It's going to go check this. <laughs> so, Gunther versus Fenestras. 62% say Fenestras. 38% say that of Gunther for the next session. What's happened to our timing screens? Oh, no. I'm just yeah, and now we've got a, we've got a problem, and I can't stop and start on Twitch. Oh, this is the one problem. This is the one problem we're streaming on Twitch: the fact that the systems have gone wrong, and we can't do anything about it. And now it's lagging us massively. I so apologise. Got the on a lap time. Fellas, Charles in second. Let us know if our voice is still on, at least, guys, because this is the one thing we can't control. Let us know if our voice is there. Possibility of light rain coming in. Fellas Strauss is up there, first sector. Right. Gunther, his first sector time is a 24.754. So he might just get in there as they continue to attack, attack, attack. And uh, your voice is still here, but your cam is lagging a bit. Okay, thank you for that. Megan's on the mouse. Okay, well, all you need is a voice, really, to be honest. Yeah, it'll come back in a minute. It's just having a paddy. Mm. It's because the driver tracker's not working. They've lost the driver tracker, and it's having a paddy that it can't be seen. Everything's gone, actually, on the driver tracker, so that's quite fun. So it's got, Oh, look, everything's gone now. It's trying to reset itself, and it's breaking. Fenestraz is faster by half a second Whoa. to Gunther. He is maxing out everything at the moment. Really strong times. Really strong deltas, and I don't think, Megan, we're going to see anything different here. This is going to be quite a strong run here. Uh, yeah, I don't think that Gunther is going to catch up too soon. Maybe a little bit, though definitely not going to win this one. That's the thing. Once you see a driver go near the top, yeah. it's like, no matter what you do, they're going to win it. Cross the line, then. Gunther is a 1 at 38, 8, sorry, 139, 315. Sasha Fenestra is a 138, 8, 7, 2, 4 tenths faster. Fenestra is through to face Sam Bird in the semi finals. Everyone who's gone out second has gone the faster time. Have you noticed so far? Huh, yeah, it's not about time. Right, timing screens are having an issue. Maybe because they're calm. That could be it, yeah. Right, let's hear for Fenestras. Okay, let's go, let's go. Let's go race bird in semi. Let's go race bird in semi. Versus Sam bird. Let's have a look at some super slow mo here of the Frenchman's lap. Just coming over the bumps. The car looking pretty compliant through there, it's got to be said. Flying in the air when it takes off. <laughs> but uh, Bert and Fenestra is basically the same lap time, and uh, Dennis and Gunter basically the same lap time. But I think Dennis was slightly, slightly quicker. So then, quarterfinal three Rene Rast from Neil McLaren with Sebastian Buemi for the Envision Racing Team. So Nissan Powertrain versus Jaguar Powertrain. 67% of you think. Sebastian Buemi is going to get one over on Rene Rast in the McLaren. And let's see how this is going to work out here for the drivers. Of course, we've just seen one McLaren in the walls in the form of uh, Jake Hughes. And uh, looking at Rene Rast's last performance, he was in the duels last time at Portland, so he'll be pretty pleased with that. So away we go then on the next half of the lap. 
Uh, it is the browser that's going wrong, so hopefully it'll be fixed in just a second. But the session is underway oh. once again. And now we go side by side uh, in driver's eye to try and see the difference between the two of them, Megan. There could be a slight issue Why? on the track because I just saw one of the cars kind of just like push a bit of the previous debris onto the track in the form of, do you know, one of those tape things? Yeah. The red and white things. That's been pushed onto the track, so that could end up getting sucked somewhere. We'll keep an eye on it then. Uh, OBS is frozen, so isn't that great? It's just having a complete paddy right now. Let's up here in the bus. So. Yeah, it's it's one of those things, isn't it, where the computer just sort of goes, sorry, non comprende, don't want to work with you today. Uh, so I'm sorry about that, everybody. Uh, that it's just freezing up our systems a little bit. Either way, right now, times are coming in, and it is looking very strong because it's sort of neck and neck between them, isn't it? Rast was a 24.579 first sector, Boemi a 24.5. Second sector, 32.322 for Rast, Boemi 32.6. So it's here and there between them all at the moment as they come up towards the line. Who is it going to be, though? Megan, who do you think? Uh, Rast or Boemi? Rast. It could be the first one who went first. That's the question. Rast coming up to the line, but when he's live, Rast isn't. Just to confirm to you right now what's happening on the situations of the timing tower. Who's faster? Who's not? I need time to fix this situation. It's not working. Cross the line. Who's the quicker? Rast at 138.8. But when we at 138.8. 2 2. Oh, 39,000. Boemi goes through, and again, the driver who goes out second gets the fastest time. Mortara versus Evans next up as I try and desperately solve this situation. It's like the timing tower just doesn't exist. It won't, it won't save itself. So we can't get it working. It's, a, it, it's just confusing itself all the time. Right, look, now it loads. Right, hang on a minute. We don't need that, so let's get rid of this. Let's close down the browser and see if it gives us back some memory. It does. I think. Right, Mortara versus Evans, next up. Oh, hang on a minute. It's coming back. I think it's just dealing with itself. Yeah, it's having a paddy now. It's coming to terms with the loss. <laughs> It wouldn't be a JB Motorsports issue if there wasn't issues, a weekend if there wasn't issues, yeah. You're damn right there. Oh, oh wait, no. no it's still having problems. I can't fix it. This is really annoying. The final, quarter final, final four. Motara and Evans have got underway, finally. And Motara's been released so far, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, so here we go then. It's just like the system's gone into shutdown. I can't get it working. Mm. Evans has been released. Right, here we go then. Let's see who's the fastest in this little final sector time in the deltas. Yeah, it's freezing everything. Isn't this just great trying to get it all sorted and it's just going wrong. We apologise that it's having an issue. Uh, it is not our fault. This is coming from farm and it's crashing our system. Literally, it's brought the frames per second down massively. And, it, and there's nothing I can do about it because I can't Red. stop the stream because of Twitch, which I didn't think about. Maybe well, if I tell my wife No, it's not that. It's the, it's the RAM on the computer it needs a good hit. Mortara, first sector time is a 24.454. Evans is a 24.4. Evans much faster. Second sector time for Mortara. Coming across the line now. Mortara is a 32.580. Evans. A 32.6. Okay, so Evans at the moment, net, is 31 thousandths of a second faster. I suppose that's good. Good for both of them because then they still have a chance of winning, which we have not seen as much. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's, it's a lot better than what we predicted. Mortara sliding a little bit out there on the circuit. You can see the sector times just above oh, me is, and Megan. Yeah. Evans oh. is three tenths clear now. He's way ahead. Up to the line, takes the check and flag. Evan and Mortara's a 138.9. What are we going to see from Mitch Evans? Into the last corner. Is he faster by four tenths again? It's a 138.4. And at the end of that little segment of qualifying, 
through goes Evans ahead of Mortara. Again, everybody who went out second goes faster. Isn't that weird? That's the first I time that's happened. I suppose and, uh, just go out second. Yeah. Right, systems are now resetting themselves. Although the, the FPS just keeps on changing. So there's one more little trick in my arsenal I can try here until it gets better. So just stay with us. I'm going. I suddenly remembered my Charlemagne, which is um, Professor Jones's line in mm. The Last Crusade, if you remember. You know, Sean Connery. That's that's uh, Evan sliding around again. He was having a, a none of it, was he? He was completely out of shape. Went for it massively. So, it's Dennis who was out. So it's Bird. It's it's Fenestrats versus Bird, but Wemmy versus Evans for the semi-finals. That's coming up shortly. I'm looking forward to this one. I've got a feeling it's going to be a nice, interesting weekend. There we go. Let's go then to Radzi down in the pit lane. Let's see what information he's got for us on a completely blank screen while we try because no even tweet decks working. Do you know when you're having a day when just nothing works for you? Just look at the scenery. It's pit lane. We're gonna have to listen to you. Just to get into the jewels to begin with, but unfortunately not able to make it past quarterfinals. Yeah, we just didn't have the pace. Uh, I think my first lap in the in the group stage was pretty strong, uh, and then the second one was pretty compromised. I had to lift for turns four due to the yellow flag, but we just scraped through. Uh, took some risks to, to make it back on the lap. As uh, yeah, we obviously lost quite a couple, a couple of attempts there. Uh, but yeah, the duels were just not great. You know, we just didn't have the pace. The Jaguars uh, this weekend are extremely strong. You know, I knew it from uh, like halfway through the season that this track would just play into the strength. Same for London. You know, the stop-start corners. It's uh, their traction is just unbelievable compared to ours. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, seventh, uh, I think we did a good job, you know, I'm top Porsche, and um, yeah, that's just all we had today as a package, so, relatively pleased, but ultimately, we are slow, like, we're a long way off the, the, the Jaguar powertrains, and, and the, the Nissan looks extremely strong, so, it's going to be a tough day in the office today, and, uh, and tomorrow, but if we can just try and survive, and try and pick up points here and there, then we should be pleased with that. Look, looking forward to seeing what you can do, mate. Thank you. Let's go no, to Ratsy. And not just what Jake said, but how he said it. He's not a man brimming with confidence there. He almost sounds resigned to not necessarily being on the podium, possibly today. I mean, naturally, he can't be very happy with that qualifying, uh, being out so early in the duel. So I think from his mental perspective, he's got to try and reset. I think in the race, the, his, his Porsche car has, or his um, Andretti car has been very strong. So he needs to play those strengths and, and keep that momentum going. If he if he forces himself into a momentum where he's, he's feeling downbeat, it's not going to help him this weekend. Yes, clearly the Jaguars are very strong this weekend, and for sure that the stars are aligning for for Mitch Evans. Um, but he still has a big delta in the championship, so it, nothing's won or lost yet. And, and talking about the Jaguars very briefly, and Mitch Evans specifically, he needed a good performance here, but he ideally needed the other three protagonists to have a possibly dip in form. He's got that so far. Yeah, it's happening exactly as as he needed it to happen. He's got good backup with Sam Bird behind him, um, so that's exactly everything is aligning for him. And uh, yeah, let's see how we go now for the for the finals. We're talking about that. It's now time for the semi-finals here in the jewels. Can more drama unfold? Possibly not. I'm not sure if my blood pressure can take it. So we're all getting set then for the interesting situation for the next part of the session. Could not access the specified channel stream key. I can't get it. I can't start streaming again for some reason. It's Twitch that's caused the issue. Twitch has just gone dead. I, it's really bizarre. And I can't seem to get it. Are Maybe it's an in-app issue. We're still on YouTube. So I've no idea what's happened at the moment. Maybe it's an in-app issue. Maybe the app itself is having There's a problems. network error. So, so it's their problem. Yeah, and it's, it's fried the systems. Oh, isn't it just... It's one of these things where... Everything goes wrong, and either, either everything goes wrong or nothing goes wrong. And we're back. But the system's still breaking. Well, this is... Yeah, it's... Uh, I don't know if we've... I don't know if this is... Re no, it's kept going. Good. So the session has kept going. Um, this keeps glitching. Oh, that's fine. We're really sorry for this. We've no idea what's happened. Literally no idea. We're trying to fix it. But the system's just gone basically good night. And I've never seen it do this before. It won't fix itself. No matter what I try to do. Since we're in 
Rome. Sing it up. Yeah. No matter what I try, it won't work. The FPS is just breaking. So we're trying to fix it. Just give us a moment and we'll... That's I'm hearing myself now on double. I was meant to hit the live button. So, yeah, there's something going on with the computer where it just won't work. So give us 30 seconds and we'll be back with you. <laughs> Everyone who's watching this on JV Motorsports 1 must be thinking, what on earth is going on? Because we're trying to fix it and the computer just won't work. Right, I think I've got it sorted now. I'll just commentate on the current map then. Cheers, Max. And everyone now coming well, through. It's about to come on. Right, so I can't say his name. <laughs> coming in then for the remainder of this session. The next half uh, is going to run through once more here. And fingers crossed, it's going to be an interesting one. We've got Sasha Fenish Trans and Sam Bird. So Sasha Fenestras and Sam Bird coming in next, and it did here is a different thing. Oh no, no, Twitch! Why did you do that? Why did you change? Oh, so, oh I'm fed up with this. People still be looking. I'm having the worst week of my life, and I am literally like, I do not give a flying monkeys anymore. I'd happily just finish all of it. I can't deal with this. System's gone into an absolute meltdown and won't work because it's having a paddy, and I just can't fix it, no matter what I do. It just won't work. So if anyone's got any ideas on how to, you know, hit a computer into working, and that would be very much appreciated because it's, it's just died. Everything's just died. So I apologise that it's uh, having this issue as I think our driver tracker is now back up and working. It is, so at least we've got something working. Yeah, so this is not even on the lap time yet. Fenestras and Bird coming through. So, okay, well, I can't do this anymore. I really can't. Everything I try just fails, so why do I even bother all the time? Fenestras and Bird in this Group B going out. So, away we go then. Birds out first with Fenestras. I would love to tell you, but the driver track is not working again, just as it hasn't been throughout the entirety of the session. Fenestras out of turn three, down across the start line, looking to be okay, Megan, I think. Sasha needs to get it, because he's got an opportunity to take yet another pole position. Bird, however, wants to go to the final, because he's had a shocking qualifying. I, th I sympathize. He really has had a shocking qualifying. First sector time's coming on then. What's the delta? Honestly, this computer, I wish I could get rid of it. I, I, my life is now incredibly hard with this. I can't, I, it's, I can't be dealing with it. Heart rate, by the way, for anybody who wants to know, especially people who are, you know, concerned about how high it got last week. My heart rate right now is at 103 beats per minute. Do you know 160 is Yeah, I know. First sector time for Bird is a 24.487. Oh, look at that. Fenestra is a 24.488. Thousands between them. Second sector for Fenestra is a 32.299. Bird faster by eight tenths. This is looking mighty strong once again. Let's hope that timing tower appears itself before the next round. Bird could still have it here. At least you can see the sector times Bird above. seems to be leading. Yeah, he's, he's massive. Fenestra has lost the time. Sam Bird is going to go through, and he's the second car out on the track. Fenestras will take the checkered flag. His time will be a 1.39.807. Bird, fastest sector one by a thousandth, fastest sector two by eight tenths. This should be easy pickings for Sam Bird as he exits the last corner. He is a second faster than Sasha Fenestras. Oh my. 138.761. Bird is in the final despite getting a lap time deletion and he wasn't even supposed to be here. There's no stopping him. But when he versus Evans next up, let's hear from him. Let's go. 
38-7, a tenth of a second quicker than he was able to do in his uh, duel against Dennis and Bird. But uh, now the question is, where is Evans? Because remember, he did a 38.4. He's up again. Well, either way, we're going to have Bird in the final from semi-final one. So he's going to be on course to try and get those three points. The predictor vote saying Evans on 88, but when we on 12. So that could be something coming through. Literally, there's only one thing differently I've done uh, in between the practice and qualifying, and that's finish this stick. I think it's cost it. The computer's just having a massive paddy. Literally, frame FPS is fluctuating massively. Average time to render, that's fine. Frames missed due to rendering lag, though, 39%. Skipped frames, 3%. And even if I reset it, it just won't work. And then we've got encoding overloaded. Consider turning down video settings. We're not doing anything differently. It was working all weekend. As soon as we needed to actually work, it just won't. It's such a stupid machine. Right, first lap times on then. Buemi, he is already in the first sector time. It's a 24.506. Evans is just coming out of turn three, Megan, and isn't looking that strong. Doesn't say well for the votes. No, it doesn't, does it? 24.357. Evans up by 0.149. So he's catching the time up little by little, delta by delta. But I don't, he just doesn't want to risk it, does he? Doesn't want to cost anything in this one. Yeah, it is. Also, does anybody know how I can link highlights together on Twitch? Because otherwise, that's completely unfair that there's no, you can have unlimited retries on things. That's not fair. Because then I've got, now I've got to do several highlights of it. <sighs> I hate this. I hate it. I hate it. Everything's on red. I, I really hate it. I can't deal with this anymore. I, I really don't like doing it anymore. It, I've lost all fun for it because everyone's making my life harder with it. Can't do it. Evans in the first sector. Second sector looking good. Okay. Right, so... First and second sectors are purple. So coming up to the line now. Evans just about to come up. And what does he do? Looks like the second sec like the third sector, sorry, is also purple. Evans goes through with a 138.461. That's Two seconds gap between Evans and Bawemi. That was not close at all. At least the... And now our timing tower is freezing. Oh, do you know, there's some things where you just go, what the hell is going on? Is anybody actually bothered anymore? That's my thing. Is anybody actually caring about anything anymore? Because I do not give a flying monkeys what's going on with this thing. It is so bad. The systems are just confusing everything. Nothing is... When did people stop producing good quality systems? Like, why is Formula E consist consistently crashing? Consistently crashing and being so bad. I think when COVID started. It's unbelievable. It has just destroyed all of our systems. Now I've got to go through and I can't even do things with Twitch. And it's just, it is so bad. The whole system failed. We're going to go and come back. If you're watching on YouTube, that's fine. But we're going to have to get this sorted because I've never in my life seen such a bad system. We'll be back. You're back with us here on qualifying. Everything now looks to be working, and we're going to head back down to the pit with Radzi. Racing James Barkley, one happy customer, but an interesting situation now, Kelvin, in terms of team orders. What's he going to say to Sam Bird? Very interesting. I think if you're James Barkley, I think it's it, it's a pretty easy decision. You have to back your guy for the championship. There's one guy, Mitch Evans, fighting. He needs every car in between him and his title contenders, and I think just to stay out of trouble for turn one, it's a logical thing. That said, I think Mitch Evans has the power to do it in his own hands today and take the pole position. He's looked impeccable all weekend. The bonkers situation, Oli, is that at one stage it was looking like Sam wasn't even going to be in the duels, and here he is in the final. Just goes to show that you know around a track like this, 19 corners, 2.1 miles, you ha you cannot make mistakes. Formula E 
qualifying is so close. It comes down to a hundredth of a second. And yeah, it's, it's well, we done a very good job. We can see Sam Bird was obviously there getting ready and raring to go. A question that you probably can't answer. What is the magic formula that Jaguar have on this track? I mean, four wins over the past six races here. One has been Sam Bird, three have been Mitch Evans. There's something. I think they both the drivers are, are really riding on their confidence here. The whole weekend we've been hyping up Mitch Evans for sure as a driver. You take that on board, you, you thrive on the confidence, turn five and six. These, the sector two here is particularly important for driver confidence. And as Jake Dennis said, I think the, the Jaguar powertrain itself seems to be really good in traction. These stop and go corners suits the, the, the style of the car and the philosophy of what they got in car setup. So everything seems to be going in their direction so far. The context of this now in the terms of the championship, Jake Dennis, not necessarily in the front two rows, but then the other two protagonists, Cassidy as well. It's re I mean, Pascal Verlant, they're going to be disappointed and watching this like a hawk. There's a lot that can, can happen here. And as we know, at the end of the championship, it can be chaos. But for Jake Dennis right now, his mindset should be, I just need to have a strong finish. He's the championship leader, but he, he, can't, he has to be careful with uh, Mitch Evans at the front now. Um, swept the weekend here last year as we said earlier he has a very strong chance of gaining a lot of points here this weekend and just to remind you as well not only do you obviously get yourself into a perfect position in being the pole sitter but you also get three points which 32 points separates mitch evans from jake dennis who's at the top of the championships so that would encroach just to 29 25 will give you a win so anything is possible and all things could turn around here in rome it's time to find out it's the final of the jewels So then the drivers are ready to go. Sam Bird versus Mitch Evans in the battle for pole position here in Rome. Just having a look down at the stats, Jag have only taken one front row lockout in Formula E history. Definitely difference between the tyres, by the way. I can explain more after. Copy. So what's that team radio message all about there, uh, Alan? Just uh, come back to my point. Uh, last time that Jaguar got a front row lockout was almost two years to the day in New York in 2021. Yeah, quite a quite a long time ago in that respect, but it's very difficult to get both your cars up in this championship, up at the front, uh, and when you do, you've got to celebrate it because it doesn't happen that often. But coming back to the comment on the tyres was uh, basically, as we saw between the quarter and the semis, then they switched the two sets of tyres on uh, on Evans' car, and he prefers one set to the other. He's got a feeling for one set more than the other, and so it's about that preference uh, that he was talking about, his two runs and the feeling of the grip on the other side of it remember we saw Bohemian he looked like he had no grip he was just sliding around and so there's it's where it's usage it's temperature it's quite a lot of different factors that come into it we're getting ready then for the final half of this qualifying session and I think everybody's ready to be done with it as well the systems are just going completely haywire what happened was Formula E's systems tripped when they had to reintroduce Sam Bird into the system it blew and because the computer was recording and double streaming it couldn't reset itself so that blew as well which basically created such a horrible system I'm done with it do you know when if I was running this Formula E wouldn't have these issues, but then again, they are the FIA, so they never have systems that actually work. It's so bad. Right, Jaguar doubles. They'll have a front row start no matter what happens. This is the battle for pole position. They get a three points for it. Will it be Evans or will it be Bird? This is the question. And away we go on the wall. Who do you think, Evans or Bird? Well, the world seems to think it's Evans. Could be. <laughs> and away we go. Bird heads out first, followed by Mitch Evans. Love to see on the driver track, but they're so tiny on my side. Let's try and get the systems working. Notice as well how broken, the t look at that. That's how broken the, the timing tower is. It's just completely out of sync. Never seen it that bad. We'll readjust that ready for the race later. I, it's just, it's one of those things where you literally just can't be bothered anymore. It's one of those weekends. It's one of those couple of weeks, actually. Will it get bad? No, it won't. YouTube are, YouTube are going to be, you know, cruel. Systems are going to keep failing. We haven't got enough money to repair them all. It's basically just that we're doing this on literally no budget. Forget about shoe. I would love to have a shoestring budget. We have no budget to fix these systems that are failing, and it is getting on my nerves. Right, bird in. It's just so frustrating because you try so hard to put so much effort in and it's the equipment that let you down. 
and YouTube, which is why we're on Twitch. However, I do know after Googling that we can add uh, multiple parts of the stream together in one highlight, so that that's good. I can, I can do that and get that sorted later. Not sure how, but we'll have a look and get them all linked up together. But it's such a bad system with failures. And now look, it's perfectly fine. But one system glitch from Formula E destroys everything. And it always happens in qualifying. It's getting to the point where you just go, oh well. May as well just record Formula E at this point. And I'll we'll load it later. Well, we know we are on the main channel, but I've also got to do that. I'm going to put the two streams together for uh, YouTube and upload that. Right, final time. This is the part of qualifying everybody loves. Sam Bird is on a flying lap time. First sector time will be coming up in around about seven seconds time. Evans is on a lap two. The two Jaguars battling it out. First sector time for Sam Bird, 24.376. Evans out of turn three. Cross the start line, down towards turn four. Look, it's finishing the control line at different parts of the track here in Rome. What's the first delta for Evans? It's a 24.398. Oh, so Bird is 14 thousandths of a second ahead, Megan. Oh my, I've just seen. Is he going to take pole? I'm not sure. Can barely hear you there. I said, I'm not sure. What Bird the? in the wall at turn seven. And look at him. Um, Evans is 1.1 off of Bird. And look at that. Evans is second sector. Look at that. Bird's second sector, 33.9. But Evans is, is a 32.8. So how is he a second ahead? I have no idea. Hang on. Came out Ev nowhere. Evans is now ahead. They've swapped over again. So it's yep. Bird that's lost a second, not Evans. But the computer sure is Bird. So what do we mean about the systems? So Bird's going to start second. Mitch Evans, though, who did the double in Rome last season, looks like he's going to try and do it again. Out of the last corner, Sam Bird. It's a 140.985. It's done. It is done. Unless Evans crashes, it is done. And Mitch Evans will take pole position for this race. I don't think he will crash. Evans out of the last corner, takes the check and flag, and he's on pole position again. 139, 089, 1.8 seconds faster than Sam Bird. Everybody who goes out second had the faster time throughout the track improvements, and it is. Evans on pole. And that's pole position, mate. Pole position. Mega job. Mega job. Let's control the inlap pace. Well, that camera's a surprise. What happened to Bird? I have no idea. Bird literally went nowhere. How in one sector did he lose a second? I don't know. That's really bizarre, isn't it? Did he lock up? That's yeah. the only explanation I can think of. Locked up made an error somewhere on the line. Turn seven, he went deep. But he couldn't have lost a second there, surely. Still, good lap time. Situation done and dusted. Streams back up and running normally, thankfully. So, the grid will be Evans followed by Bird, then Boemi Fenestras, then I believe it will go to Verline, Cassidy, Randor, Nato. Muller, De Costa, Vern, De Grassi, Tickton, Frines, Lotto, Mary, Titicamera, Hughes. Back in the order at the back of the grid. So Hughes will start 22nd. But look at that. Evans now on 125 points. Gets himself right into championship contention with that pole position with uh, topping the group stages. And he gets four points here alone. <laughs> Topped the group with one point. Topped the final with three points. He's on pole position here for the Romy Pre coming your way later on today. Bird coming in then. Right, you can disappear. Yay. See you later for the race. I'm going to go nap. All right. See you, see you at 145. Megan's off now. Bird coming back in. We'll head back over to the pits and listen to Saunders. He's had just a couple of moments to breathe and catch his breath after a really impressive performance here in qualifying. No surprise at all. He set the pace so far here today with uh, 
topping the free practice this morning, topping qualifying here in all of his duels, and indeed in the uh, uh, group stage, he was pretty competent as well. And he makes his way through with a second pole of the season. Very welcome result there for the Kiwi. As Alan said, really does need some strong results here this afternoon to keep himself in the title fight. And he's got the best opportunity to do so as well. Sam Bird is his second front row start of the year. Last time he was on the front row was back in Berlin. And the last time that this man was on pole position was back in Hyderabad. But a great performance from Mitch Evans. Just seems to be completely unfallible under pressure here this weekend. Yeah, it's been a very good circuit for him historically and uh, without doubt. There's a little bit of pressure in FP1. We saw that when he got held up in the last sector in the first part of free practice behind um, Mary in uh, the Mahindra. However, saying that uh, it was all dissolved very, very quickly and since then he's been pretty sublime. Absolutely. Great to see the fans have flocked to the circuit. Track temperature, actually, for that last session also increased up to 53 degrees Celsius. It is just getting hotter and hotter by the minute here. It started at 38 degrees at the beginning of qualifying. It was at 30 degrees at the end of free practice two this morning. That makes a big, big difference to the car. And it's going to be a thought for all of the team as we see Sam Bird there sitting in his car waiting to go onto the Weybridge and the scrutineering. Uh, just to make sure everything's in order. But that's going to be one of the factors for the team this afternoon. Yeah, it really is. OK, so all the action then done. We're waiting for the official starting grid uh, to talk you through what has happened. And here it comes as well. It should pop up on your screen. And this is how they will line up on the grid then for the race later on. It is going to be uh, Mitch Evans on pole position. Sam Bird is second, Sasha Fenestras third, Sebastian Bromi fourth, as I said. Then it's Rene Rast fifth, Eduardo Mortara sixth, Jake Dennis starts seventh, Max Gunther is eighth, Nick Cassidy ninth, Pascal Verlein down in tenth, Norman Nato eleventh, Stoffel van Dorn is twelfth, and uh, then we get thirteenth uh, for Da Costa, fourteenth Muller, fifteenth Degrassi, sixteenth Vern, seventeenth Rhines. 18th Tictum, 19th Mary, 20th Lotterer, 21st Hitter Camera, 22nd for Jake Hughes. Okay, sorry that all didn't work out exactly how we wanted it to in terms of the stream and Formula E buffering our systems. It looks like everything's now fully prepared. We'll get it all set up, though, and ready to go. We'll be back later for the race on air 1.45 British Summer Time. Join us then when it's a Jaguar front row and Mitch Evans goes for a third win here in Rome. Bye-bye.